Hey guys, in today's video we'll be making this animation. And if you want much faster cycles renders, check out Turbo Tools in the link in the description below. First up, download an animated character from Mixamo. Import it into your scene and make sure that the feet are touching the ground. Add a ground plane big enough to cover the entire path of your character. And we'll set it to display as bounds only in the viewport. Enable collisions in the plane's physics tab. And estimate some values that you think will make the particles react in the way that you want. Set the render engine to cycles and then make the plane into a shadow catcher in the object visibility settings. Add a particle system to the character mesh. Set the viewport display to 20% and the particle count to 20,000. Set the start and end frame to control when the balls will start falling off the character and when that will finish. And then set the lifetime to be the total number of frames you want your animation to be minus the start frame. Add a 2 meter UV sphere and then use the decimate modifier to reduce the number of faces so that cycles will render faster. And then apply the modifier and hide the sphere in the viewport and the final render. Go back into the character's particle settings and set the render as to object and then specify the sphere as the instance object and set the scale to 0.022 and then under extra make sure you tick the options for unborn and dead so that the particles are visible on the character before the start of the animation. Under velocity turn off normal velocity and enable object velocity so the initial movement of the spheres is based on the movement of the character and add some randomization. Turn off the show emitter options for both the viewport and the final render. Turn off permeability in the plane's collision options if the balls are going through the floor. Animate the camera so the character is always in view. And to get a handheld camera effect, go to the graph editor and then add a noise modifier to the camera's X, Y, and Z rotation channels, making sure they're all a little bit offset. And make any final tweaks to the timings. Add a HDRI world environment and then using Cycles viewport, rotate it until you get a view that you like. And to make sure the particles sit on the floor correctly, go into the particles physics section under deflection and turn on size deflect. And now we'll give the sphere a material so that each sphere gets a unique colour. And then we'll modify the ground plane so that it emulates the walls inside the HDRI and that will make sure we get the correct collisions. And then tweak the collision properties of the plane until we get the result that we like. And then in the particle systems cache section, bake the simulation. Set the cycles render settings. If you're using Turbo Render, then for this simple scene, the denoising mode of draft to rapid and sample preset of crap should be fine. We'll turn on motion blur and we'll also turn on transparency under the film options. Enable the shadow catcher and environment pass. Separate the scene and the camera into two collections. Make a linked copy of the scene and call it environment. And then in the new scenes turbo render options, turn off the surfaces and turn on the world environment and the heavy depth of field motion blur option so that only the environment gets denoised. And then in the compositor of the first scene, set up two render layered nodes so that both scenes get rendered. And if using turbo render, make sure you've got a cache folder set for both scenes. Do a test render of frame one. And then we can add the necessary nodes to combine the two scenes together and multiply the shadow catcher with the result. And now we'll do a test render of the last frame and add a denoise node to the shadow catcher pass if necessary. And then to make sure the 3D elements have got the same level of blur as the HDRI, we'll add a blur node to the geometry and then we'll add a blur node to the shadow catcher, making sure both have got identical values. And then we'll use the scopes to make sure the pixel values all fall within the 0 to 100 range, adding a node for black level, white level, gamma and contrast. And if you've got turbo tools, add a cache node set to 100% before the first RGB curve node so that you get immediate feedback. And then you can use the nodes to set the black level, white level, gamma and contrast. And then add a lens distortion node just for a little bit of chromatic aberration. We'll grab some CC0 sound effects from freesound.org. We'll bring those back into Blender, into the VSE editor. We'll make sure we set the timeline to sync with audio. And then we'll layer and keyframe the volumes until we get the result that we want. We'll set up Blender's output so that it outputs to a FFmpeg animation. And then under encoding, we'll make sure we choose MPEG-4. And we'll choose an audio codec as well so the audio is included. 
And then one thing I forgot, I need to add two materials to the ground plane, one for the floor and one for the walls, making the floor sort of a brownish colour and the walls a white colour so that we get the correct indirect lighting interacting with the character. And then we'll do a test render and make sure that the scope show that the values of the pixels all fall within the 0 to 100 range still. And then a few final tweaks, I'm going to give the sphere material a bit more glossiness. And I've decided that the viewport version with less particles looks better than the final render. So I'm going to delete the bait cache and then I'm going to set the particle count to 4000, which will be basically 20% of what we had before. And I can set the viewport count to 100%. And then we'll bake the animation again. One last test render. And then just for a little bit better quality, in the turbo render options, I'm going to turn on the interior stroke heavy GI option to give us a little bit more samples between the balls. And then we're ready to render the full animation. If you're using turbo tools, make sure you cache the expensive nodes so that if you want to make a new version of the animation, you don't have to wait for those nodes to recalculate when you republish using the Turbo Tools Fast Publish feature. And voila!